Hello, uh, Dr. Ashish. Yeah. Yeah, you are live, sir. You can start your presentation. Okay. Yeah. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, the fertility surgeries uh, that is uh, in a gynec part. And does this particular surgeries will going to uh, increase our success rate in IVF? So just a minute. Uh, go back to yeah. Sorry. And this will be uh, my presentation regarding the two or three things. Like all of us are doing the surgeries, all of us are doing the laparoscopic surgery in gynecology. But when it comes down to the fertility issues, which surgery has to be taken into which account that has to be talked about. So this is my brief uh, introduction and I'm practicing in Pune and I'm having a chain of IVF that is Asha IVF center in Pune and ba like in Baner as well as in a first IVF center in a state of Arunachal. So uh, why we need it at all? Because uh, if we have something that is uh, which going to get an organic lesion in the endometrial cavity, which can be detected by the 3D ultrasonography as well as histosonosulfingraphy. If we don't find the cause of investigations, then it can be detected by the laparoscopy like a bulky ovary in a PCOS, which is not been re re responding to the ovarian stimulation or maybe there is a peritubal adhesions. Because the patient comes down to you with the infertility usually has the 3D ultrasonographic pictures, which will clearly indicate there is a, some abnormalities like the polyps, fibroids, or maybe septum. But the certain abnormalities or the organic lesions like the peritubal adhesions or the PCO patients where the ovaries are not uh, uh, having the uh, response to the stimulation or maybe a mild hydrosulfings, femoral agglutinations, which cannot be detected just by doing the 3D ultrasonography. So hysteroscopy for the endometrium, the, as all of us are knowing, the, uh, the uterus endometrium is a dynamic. It has a secretory as well as the proliferative phase. So when we should be knowing as a visual modality, uh, the hysteroscope provides us a better visual aid. And in the same sitting, we can address the issue. So hysteroscopic evaluations may require what is the normal pattern. We must know what is the proliferative phase, what is the secretory phase. Then there is a organic lesions. Like we do know there are the polyps in the uterine cavity. We know there are the fibroids, there is the infections which will cause intrauterine adhesions and maybe the congenital abnormalities like the septum. Why we should be knowing about that? Because whenever the patient of infertility comes down to you, before labeling the patient as, as unexplained infertility, one must know what are the linings, what are the, the organic cause which is responsible for the infertility per se. First to know, uh, we should be going from how the hysteroscopy will look like when you're talking about the normal endometrium in a proliferative phase and in the secretory phase. In the secretory phase, if you see and if you compare uh, this uh, particular videos, in a proliferative phase, the endometrium is thin and it is uniform. And in the secretory endometrium, you can see the little bit, there are the glands, there are the, uh, the polypoid things which is coming up on the surface and this is the healthy endometrium. There is called as a surface hysteroscopy where you go near to the uh, to the uh, target organ or near to the endometrium and in the low pressure, intrauterine pressure, you can see very well architecture of the endometrial vessels as well as the glands. Coming down to the abnormalities, what abnormalities you can look into? You can look into the uh, endometrial polyps, submucous fibroids, maybe intrauterine adhesions. The intrauterine adhesions may be because of the infective or non-infective because all the times when you see the HHG and in the HHG there is a adhesions, always you thought of it is because of the vigorous curettage, but it is not like that. There may be uh, uh, intrauterine infections and it could be a, a cause for intrauterine um, adhesions formation. The polyps. When uh, when you are considering about the about the endometrial polyps, all of us knowing that the uh, that the endometrial polyps. When you do a patient of uh, IVF patients, and when you start stimulation, you see a certain time there is a polyp, and this is a polyp because of the hyperestrogenic conditions, which is liberated by the follicles developing follicles per se. But if there is a persistent polyp, and this polyp is uh, is into the endometrial cavity, all of us knows that the endometrial polyp. Demo, like it causes demonstrated mark decrease in a hoxa 10 and hoxa 11 mrn levels and which is responsible for the implantation what i mean by it if you have the polyps and the polyps is is whether it is an individual polyp whether it is a sessile polyp whether, whether it is a multiple polyp what you need to understand the polyp where what is the uh, what is the situation of the polyp whether it is in in uh, at the level of the 
uh, austere, tubal austere, or whether it is at the at the implantation triangle, or maybe a, a polyp is there and there are multiple polyps, and per se if there is nothing has been visualized in the uterine cavity, and you find out there is a polyp, and this polyp per se impair the implantation. Then coming down to the, the, you can see these are the these are the video clips which will tell you about the different types of the polyp. The endometrial polyp may be a polypoids which is more, and a sessile polyp. In which way, if it is a fibroid polyp, see you must do your scan by yourself. What I mean by it, if you are doing the scan by yourself, that will tell you whether the polyp has has a. Um, blood supply or whether it is a fibroid polyp or whether it is endometrial polyp if it is a fibroid polyp it will cause the uh, it will have the blood supply from the endometrium and then you required a, maybe a bipolar resectoscope or maybe a unipolar resectoscope but if it is a polyp which is only endometrial polyp and that not that much vascular by uh, at its base then with the hysteroscopic scissors you can do most of the job these are the polyps uh, like uh, like they compare the patients endometrial polyps and and it's uh, it's a pregnancy outcome what they found out the definitely the polyp per se has the has a negative impact uh, as far as the take home baby rate or maybe the implantation uh, in ivf patients so whatever uh, said and done if you have the polyp it is a polyp better to get it removed rather than waiting for a certain time these are the endometrial, which size of the endometrial polyp, then it's come down to whether the, uh, it is a smaller polyp or whether it is a bigger polyp, which polyp to be removed. If the polyp is more than 1.5 centimeter, one should be thinking of doing the polypectomy rather than waiting for the polyp to grow and decrease our implantation rate. And that's why in a, in a ICSI cycles, they, these are the study which will demonstrate us the endometrial polyp, whether the endometrial polyp per se and the size of the polyp, whether the size of the polyp affects your our implantation rate and this is the beautiful study which will quote us that if the polyp is more than 1.5 centimeter and if it is into, into into the uterine cavity it is better to uh, remove those kind of a polyp rather than waiting for them and decrease the implantation rates this is again uh, in a 3d ultrasound and mri in a predicting of the fibroids the another uterine pathology all of us are worried about the uterine fibroids whether the fibroid should be removed or whether the fibroid should not be removed which um, fibroids are having a having an impact on the fertility uh, there is a beautiful study of of comparison of the fibroids the detection of the fibroids if you are doing a 3d ultrasonography by yourself or if you are doing a mri if the fibroids are more than uh, more than in five numbers it is always better that you should uh, do the MRI because in MRI detection rate is much more higher. If the fibroids uh, are, are in a lesser uh, numbers, it is better to, uh, even if the accuracy by the 3D ultrasonography is much more high. So whenever you are talking about the fibroids, we must know what is the mapping of the fibroids because that will decide about the course of action. As far as the laparoscopic surgeon and IVF specialist, we must know which is the, what is the location of the fibroids and which fibroids they need to be removed. The submucous fibroid, there is no uh, debate because these are the fibroids which is in the uterine cavity and these fibroids uh, distort the uterine cavity that has to be removed. Because of the FIGO classification and because of the uh, of the different classification also, what we came to know, these are the these are the fibroids which will definitely has negative impact on the on the implantation and those fibroids requires a surgery and these fibroids has to be removed because that will increase our success rate. Then coming down to these are the classification which will tell us whether the whether the uh, the fibroids in which group or which set of fibroids needs to, uh, as these are the location of the fibroids and this uh, location of the fibroids which tell us whether it is going to impair the implantation even if if you say this particular picture the fibroids which is three and which is in a four which is a myo uh, endometrial junction endomyometrial junction which is going to affect and then these kind of a fibroids has to be removed. Then coming out to why why it has to be removed because all of us know it it influences the uh, the fertility mainly based on the favorable outcome after the myomectomy is been rewarded. So these are the these are the fibroids. If you see this, there there is a little bit bulge in the endometrial cavity. If this kind of a fibroids are removed, we know the pregnancy rates are are a little bit on a higher side. And these are the fibroids which requires more of the attention rather than any of the fibroids as well as the fertility outcome is considered because these are the fibroids which is not been easily been seen in the and the just to but do a hysteroscopy you miss out 
So if you have the 3D ultrasonography and these are the fibroids at the myoendometrial junctions are there, it is better to remove those fibroids because we all of us know that the particular vasculature is, is not that much good when the myoma is there. We have an impaired vascularity. We have a higher vascularity at the capsule. So this will decrease our implantation rates. These are the certain studies which will tell us that uh, the submucous fibroids which disturb the uterine cavity found to be having a negative, having a positive effect on the pregnancy outcome. So if there is a uh, intramural or even if uh, the, the fibroid which is at near to the myoendometrial junction uh, is there and is having the ne negative impact as far as the continuation of the pregnancy is considered. The impact on the myomas, these are the, these are the studies, these are the people that have done the studies. If the myoma is more than three centimeters, the pregnancy rates are, are 37 uh, is less. And if the myoma size is, is, is lesser than three centimeters, the pregnancy rates is going to get on a higher side. These are the fibroids. Then coming down to the, uh, uh, the last mark classification, which has beautifully been said when you are doing the hysteroscopy, the last mark classification will tell us these are the fibroids which can be managed to, uh, to do it by the hysteroscopic modulation rather than going for a laparoscopic procedure of the myomectomy. What exactly the last mark classification tell us that whether the, what is the angle between the myoma and the endometrium? What is the size of the myoma, whether it is protruding in, into the uterine cavity or whether it is a, inside the my, uh, myometrium or whether we require a two double sitting of the, of the myomectomy that will be uh, very, mal, very much uh, addressed by the last month classification. These are the uh, particular uh, uh, videos which will tell you the when you are doing the hysteroscopy, these are the, these are the fibroids you encountered with. There are the massive fibroids which will altogether destroyed the uterine cavity. These are the fibroids because we don't want the patient to have the scars on the abdomen. We don't want if something is better that can be done with the, uh, without any incision on the abdomen. It's a hysteroscopy is the tool. And that can be very well, uh, very well managed. We can see the fibroid. We can see the uh, see a whole of the uterine cavity. And this can be tackled when you are doing a hysteroscopic resection, maybe a bipolar with the bipolar resectoscope. So these are the certain things. Then coming down to the intramural, whether the intramural, which is not in the in the cavity, and still they are the fibroids, because many of the times I received the reports from the many of the doctors, even if there is a fibroids of multiple fibroids and they wanted to remove it. Then really these particular small, small fibroids need to be removed or there is an intramural fibroids, which is of five centimeter or six centimeter need to be removed. This has to be discussed about. These are the these are the fibroids. Definitely, such a big fibroids on the left side. If you see, has to be removed because that this particular even if she become pregnant, the ongoing pregnancy rate is going to get uh, on a lesser side. Similarly, the smaller fibroids, which is four centimeter, are uh, has to be removed because there are the studies where this particular fibroids called uh, is having a hyperestrogenic uh, conditions and and this particular. Fibroids, if you remove prior to the fertility, will increase the chances of ongoing pregnancy. But mind well, what are the techniques? Whenever you are talking about fertility enhancing surgeries, the technique is minimal use of the cautery, minimal use of the diathermy into the tissues. And it is always better if you have a bigger defect, it is better to use a two-layer suturing whenever you are doing a laparoscopic myomectomy. Because if you are not in a good in suturing in a laparoscopy, it is better that that one should be avoiding or one should take a, a help of the laparoscopic surgeon in order to do the live surgeries. Because these are the defects. If you are doing a laparoscopic myomectomy and if there is a defect in the endometrial cavities or my myometrium, this way is causing a weak scar. And later on, even if she get concealed, there are this, uh, are the reports where. Uh, uh, the patient is after the myomectomy, there is an incidence of the rupture. So it is depending upon who is doing the surgery, it is depending upon how many layers and the nodes. <coughs> I urge to all of uh, all of those who are listening to me, being the doctor or a non-medical, it is, it is always better to give the detailed surgical notes to the, all of us that, that will tell us like how the surgery has been done and which layers it has been used and and whether the surgery is a is a is a nearly required some complications are arised out of it or not. So detailed you know, surgical steps should be narrated when the discharge card or the summary of the operation is been given to the next surgeon. 
evolution of the endo, uh, uh, endometrium again will come down to the some of the points that that way, whether the endometrium uh, you you seen when you are as a ivf specialist all of us doing the stimulation ovarian stimulation for oocyte pickup but in certain times we not get the good endometrium the endometrium triple line is not there the endometrium is not dynamicity what i mean by the dynamicity that the, like what we know that the ovum or the follicle grows 2 mm per day similarly endometrium has to grow 1 mm in a proliferative phase and 1.5 in the secretory phase if in the stimulated cycle with the estrogen like all of us know we have we are giving a more or uh, estrogen uh, to the patients or or there a, a, a supra physiological estrogen in those patients usually these are the particular things where the endometrium is not respond uh, responding to your endogenous estrogen or even if you give a ex exogenous estrogen and and she is not showing any proliferation that means there is a uh, there is a chance of a of a infection and in india in our country the most of the uh, of of the uh, important thing of uh, about the infection is the tubercular endometritis what are the signs even if you do a uh, office histoscopy you go from the cervical canal and if you see there is a inflammation or periosteal an agglutination or if there is a called as a strawberry appearance or there may be endometritis and that's that's why i have talked about a contact histoscope where if you are, are putting too much of pressure and distension media for uterus uterine cavity to distend you will lose out these particular points so always better that you should do the histoscopy in a minimal pressure which is not required that much in a higher amount this is the particular video i i wish uh, that all of you are can see this video which will gives you the indirect evidence that if i am i'm going to do uh, like these are the procedures what we are doing with the office histoscopy we are putting the office histoscope but if you see the internal loss is 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 not that much uh, uh, friendly to us so we used a histoscopic scissor just to give a niche on that particular cut and this particular uterine cavity is going to open but if, if we are going to start from uh, from releasing the adhesions and in the particular time i i realized that there is a something called as a kgs material which is coming out and this kgs material later on we send it for the um, culture and and histochemical analysis we found out it is a tubercular endometritis so this is a clear cut evidence but what is the unclear evidence that if you are giving uh, uh, if you are doing the histoscopy and if you are seeing the ostia which is not not uh, showing the dynamicity what i mean by the dynamicity is like when you are reduce down the pressure the ostia should uh, close and open it again but if it is not happening in that manner it means that there is a rigid ostia or rigid tubes or if there is a peri uh, ostial agglutination these are the uh, are the ones where you need to take care of it and these are the routinely done in in our center in pune there where i practice in uh, in our asha ivf center we if the endometrium is not not showing in our our studies we found out that in in 15 10 to 15% of the pay, of the patients even after the repeated ivf failures what we uh, we do we do the histoscopy just to see and in the office histoscopy the patient doesn't require any anesthesia the patient doesn't require any stay it is a like you know in a opd basis so whenever you are doing at a opd procedure the patient herself can see because uh, whatever is the pain will be there at the at the time of the when the histoscope is is negotiating the internal loss once you are into the cavity usually the pain, patient doesn't feel any pain and that is the beauty of our of his histoscopy what we routinely do in a previous ivf failures or recurrent implantation failure patients where we need to understand there is some cause inside it and these are the certain things where we need to do a uh, office histoscopic evaluation and management accordingly similarly histoscopic evaluation as i talked to you all these things i will not go into the details uh, sonosurfingraphy and hhg uh, when you talking about something is a congenital in origin if you are doing the uh, hhg by yourself you know it is a bicornuate uterus or maybe it is a septal uterus if you are doing a 3d ultrasonography what usually we do at our center is like we put the patient in not for the hhg nowadays we do all the patient the 3d ultrasonography a transvaginal it is the same transvaginal ultrasonograph which has the 3d uh, into it and when we put the 3d uh, probe it will delineate your uterine cavity it will delineate your 
U-turn margin, and this will, if there is an obtuse angle, it means that uh, you are dealing dealing with the bicornate uterus. If the angle between the two ostia is is acute one, it means that probably you are dealing with the septum. But always, uh, it is not mandatory that you should do a laparoscopy whenever you are thinking of the septum dissection, because that is not uh, uh, not the per se is required. So what all the things uh, said and done that what we need to understand the most common cause of of a uterine anomaly is the septate anomaly where the patient is having the fertility loss or maybe having a difficulty in conception. So these are the are the 45, 55 percent of the patient. Usually the, uh, the commonest uh, um, abnormality, organic abnormality, is the septum. It can be a complete, incomplete, or maybe a segmental. 25 percent of early abortions is because of the septum. 6.2 percent in maybe a late abortions or maybe they land up into premature labor. Here, as, as this August gathering, I really wish to quote that whenever we are doing as a, any infertility specialist or maybe IVF or endoscopy, what we need to understand, we need to give a live birth rate. And not only the live birth rate is a nine months, nine days. So our aim should be giving a full-term pregnancy, not premature deliveries, not a twin pregnancies, which will have a more NSUs admission, which will increase their uh, chances of... Uh, uh, of a survival or maybe a later on uh, neonatal or early neonatal complications on the higher side. So as a treating physician, what is our aim? Our aim has to be giving a basic nine months, nine days pregnancies to all. So role of the septum in reproductive age group, just to go into the little bit depth, if you do the biopsy from the septum and the, from the normal endometrium, what they, uh, they found out that if in the septum, the glands are, are less, we don't have a good endometrium, so that's why the implantation doesn't occur there. And, uh, and the miscarriage rate is because of, of uh, uh, there is no coordinate uh, uterine activity, and this uterine cavity, the length is reduced, and VGF receptors, there is local defect, and which will lead up eventually into abortions or maybe implantation failures. These are the certain papers uh, in, uh, because every uh, time when we talk something about, about fertility enhancing surgeries or maybe IVF, we should support our documents with the, uh, with the um, uh, publications. And these are the public, uh, publicized uh, data which will tell you when you're doing a septum dissection, which will increase the chances of the uh, live birth rate and maybe a uh, take-home baby rate. If you are, this is the particularly what we do as the same as a, this is also a OPD procedure. It is not something that will required uh, admission or something like that. It is, it can be done very well in OPD procedure or maybe a, a smaller sedation for that matter. These are, uh, these are the bipolar uh, knife and, and you can use a scissor also. I will just show in a, uh, this is the laparoscopic part of it. When you, when you see the heart shape of the uterus, it means that there is a there is a dimple in the middle of the fundus. And when when this is clearly so that there may be a bicornate and we, and maybe a, a septate. But when you put the hysteroscope, the septum is beautifully uh, been localized. This is the left cavity of the uterus. Then there is a right cavity of the uterus, and the septum is in the midline. We know that the septum has a two. If it is a broad septum and it is a thin septum. If it is a broad septum, it is always, I myself always do a, a 3D ultrasonography or maybe a, at least a 2D to know what is the vascularity of the septum. If the vascularity of the septum is, is much more, it is always better to give, use a, a receptoscope rather than the knife because once you are using the knife, there is a bleeding occur and then it will cause a disturbance in your vision. But if you are, uh, uh, if the septum is thin one like this one, you can definitely use a hysteroscopic scissor for dissection of the septum and resection of the septum. Nowadays, what we do, this is a called as a dissection between the two um, uh, surfaces. We are just dissecting out. Nowadays, what the what we are doing is to take the septum piece intact and and make a cut from above and and below and take that part out. That is called as a complete septum resection. And this is the septum division. So these are the these are the certain articles in in uh, fertility sterility that all of us are following. That the septum uh, uh, itself after the uh, uh, after the septum uh, resection the pregnancy rate increases. Then coming down to what about the uh, about the metroplasty and uh, uh, not taking much of the time because I know 
we don't have that much of time so what is the metroplasty what is the uterine volume all of us knowing that the uterine volume is 2 ml or 2 cc if it is lesser than that if there is a t shaped cavity then the, then there is a called as a metroplasty which will help coming down to the another uh, another abnormality is like adhesions usually the adhesions is of two types there is organic adhesions because of the infection or maybe because of the uh, uh, of the non infective element is because of the there is a damage to the uh, to the basal endometrium and this basal endometrium is is damaged and that's why we don't have the proliferation of the endometrium and this uh, two raw surfaces get adherent to each other and we have the adhesions and the, it's not something new the asherman syndrome is not something new what we talking about but this is the pathology where you can if your yourself is doing the ultrasonography you know there there is a there is a hyperechoic uh, structures or the hyperechoic vertical brands between the uh, in between the endometrium so intrauterine adhesions is called as asherman syndrome leads to the poor implantation it causes a decrease in blood supply because it's uh, usually because of the infection after the infection what settle in is a fibrosis so all this leads to the abortion and the preterm labor the abortions are uh, uh, to the tune of 40% and the preterm is 23% these are the certain videos i likely to show to all of you what i mean by the additions see here in a in a first film you can see there is only a, the internal os which is seen and and also there is addition there is called as grade 4 asherman and uh, here on on two we at least we can negotiate from the os but we never know where, where is the tubal ostium and these are the particular things all of us should know that is called as an inverted angle so the triangle is inverted we have the both the ostias on the both the sides and the cervix in the middle if you follow that in your mind you can definitely create the beautiful endometrial cavity usually what we prefer as a as a art specialist or as a infertility specialist is using of the caesar because caesar a per se doesn't cause any any damage to the remaining in the endometrium secondly the caesar is easier instrument and and usually even if there is a there is a no uh, practically no uh, what do you call as a adverse effect as far as the thermal damage or the complications rates are considered so these are the particular things when you are talking about the ashman syndrome you can use a bipolar uh, uh, point or bipolar needle for the resection when there is a dense adhesions and when you uh, thought of these adhesions could likely to bleed and these are the adhesions where you can use a bipolar needle to create the cavity because in ivf what we need we need a beautiful endometrium we need a beautiful cavity to expand we need uh, uh, um, endometrium and there is a dialogue between the embryos and the and the endometrium so all this taken into account this has to be done as far as the asherman is considered because asherman once uh, is asherman it's not like that uh, you you just do the surgery and you left it alone no what you need to understand if there is a grading of the asherman if it is grade 1 grade 2 and grade 4 uh, ashermans if it is a grade 4 ashermans it is always better that after the surgery you give a cyclical dose of estrogen and progesterone and after maybe a two or three uh, months you can do the re look hysteroscopy why the re look hysteroscopy is required because there is again a chances of formation of the adhesions again and in those conditions it is better that you do a re look hysteroscopy and if there is adhesions you can just do adhesiolysis and this in in majority of the part will will suffice the things but if it is not happening then uh, if there is again the dense adhesions it means that the patient having likelihood of continuation of the pregnancy or the implantation is very less uh, these are all all talked about this is a called as a stage 1 and mild endometriosis where you if you do the adhesiolysis you have the take home baby rate to the to the tune of 61% but if you are having a moderate to severe asherman your success rate is going to decrease to the half facing the problem what i talked to you if you are dealing with the stage 3 and stage 4 uh, asherman syndrome the chances of re adhesions formation is much more higher and in those patients it is advisable that you should do a re look uh, hysteroscopy in order to know what is the endometrial cavity and whether there is a formation of the adhesions if the formation of the adhesions again in a stage 1 or stage 2 it means that you, even if you do the frozen et or or a thaw et the chances of pregnancy is less and you have to counsel the patient accordingly coming down to the polycystic ovaries 
and and the endometriosis these are the beautiful uh, surgeries and these are the rewarding surgery as far as the art or infertility is considered the endometriosis is is, is the uh, what i liked when you would restore the anatomy it is better the patient conceived usually uh, in those uh, surgeries after those surgeries but uh, look at the at uh, the right side of the screen where uh, i am doing the polycystic ovarian drilling it's not the treatment of the choice if your gonadotropins or if your injections are not working for make you ovulate then these kind of a surgeries will help but these are the uh, are the surgeries that has to be taken into account as a last resort because whenever you are doing a pco drilling it will decrease your chances of ovarian disease and the amh and that's why it will it will uh, uh, you have to take it with a pinch of a salt whether you are going to do the pco drilling in those patients secondly with the endometriosis if you see at the, at the left uh, corner of it endometriosis means there is a you are going to uh, encounter with the all type of adhesions you are going to encounter with all type of a distorted anatomy you need to know your basics uh, knowledge of the anatomy and you have to restore the anatomy what i mean by the restoration of the anatomy is the cubo ovarian angle the usually the cubo ovarian angle has to be uh, has to be there and if it is distorted even if you do uh, only a the only a what is called as cytoreductive surgery of endometriosis like a cyst drainage or cystectomy will not make her a uh, chances of become a spontaneous conception what makes her uh, uh, more for a spontaneous conception is like you have to dissect it out you have to maintain the tube over an angle you have if you even if you do a, a cystectomy the cystectomy has to be done in the fashion that if you are uh, are doing it your your line of a separation of from the cyst and the normal ovary should be maintained if you are not going to maintain that plane it means that more more of the ovarian tissue is going to get out from the normal ovary and that will deplenish her ovarian reserve as well as the amh and afc and in those patients you require really a skilled surgeon who as a who is doing expertise into the endometriosis as well as uh, fertility preservation surgeries and these are the take home messages i really wish to talked about because there are multiple things which i, I can discuss in continuation but because of the shortage of the time whatever which is allotted to me i think these are the certain things which needs to take care of it because many of the centers or many of the ivf specialists they per se themselves not do the endo endoscopic surgeries and and you get it done from any other endoscopic surgeon you will have a surgery has to be done with the with the art it is not just a completion of the surgery in art what we required is 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 we need to understand that if you do a too much of drastic surgery which will not going to help the patient to make her pregnant here is not the eradication of the disease here we need to understand that we are doing the surgery for her fertility to enhance so these are the uh, are the specialty of the things to be talked about yeah thank you thank you very much yeah thank you so much dr ashish it was an insightful session sir thank you so much for sharing this Yeah, and I would like to thank you on behalf of all the doctors who joined today and from Librate, and we look forward to host you again in future, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Librate, and I hope this is much more are uh, educative and uh, much more helpful to all the ART specialists or all IVF specialists and endoscopic surgeon throughout the country. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir.